Hi folks, it's Lee Goldstein for the NewsTraders.com. Welcome to the oil trading room today. And I just recalled and remembered that one of our members has a trade that she would like to uh, educate everyone about for trading the news. Am I right, Chantal? Or am I right? So it's kind of interesting in the sense that it's not a news trade at the second that the news is traded. Chantal is, to me, one of the perfect people to use the JOBB system because she's happy and willing to do testing and enjoys testing. And if you like to do testing, then the odds are much better that you're going to succeed in the JOBB system because if you don't have a clue what's going on in the various news reports, you're just going to get hurt when the reports come out and you don't know what's expected, right? So because she does a lot of testing, she has a great idea about what might happen. And she comes up with extra new trades, which I'm always pushing, that my goal here is to teach you how to use the platform so that you can find your own trades. That is the most important thing, in my opinion, okay? That's what I believe. My goal here isn't for you to watch every little trade I make to follow me and think that you're going to make money doing that. That's not. I think that they've done some studies, and I'm not going to, you don't hold me to this, but there is a guy out there who has studied trade room after trade room after trade room. Most of them make up their results. Most of them don't tell you what they do. And very few of them make a steady income. I have always maintained that I wanted JOBB to be different, that I wanted us to be truthful. And I wanted us to be able to teach people to take our software and f meld it into the way that it would work the best for them. And that doesn't mean to trade every single report that gets released because you have to know which reports are behaving. You have to know which reports are going to have a good possibility of making money. Okay. That's the smart way to trade. I mean, you're not going to jump in and trade gold, say, and not know anything at all about gold, right? How much it is a tick, um, you know, what the margin is. You're just not going to do that. You're going to use some common sense. You're going to learn about it. Well, most people are. Some people are going to jump in. They're going to lose everything, and they're going to just say, oh, trading is not for me. That happens. That does happen. Okay. And obviously, there's no law that says you can't be foolish. The brokers love it. Okay. Just so you know, the standard JOBB oil trade, which I'll show you, for the past five weeks, let's say for the past six weeks, 913 out flat. 920, very nice profitable trade. 927 out flat. 10.4 was a nice profitable trade. 10.11 was barely a profit if you could get out. Okay, so it's been almost 50%. The oil trade, I think, can be a very risky trade because it is a trade that can, if the market goes wild, it could blow through your stops and you have to be prepared. You should not trade oil live with a $2,500 account. If you do, you're just asking for trouble. Oil, really. Oil report at the moment of the report is truly a $10,000 account. If you want the truth, people don't listen. People do what they want to do anyway, and that's perfectly fine. There's no law that says you can't do that. What I see today 
is some possible targets to the downside. So let's say the news is negative. You could get a pop to the low. Let's see how many ticks away that is. 46. It's only 25 ticks away. I think that's a real possibility. It's a very good possibility you're going to get a test of the high in R1, even possibly before the trade because it's only seven ticks away and eight ticks away. And that's two magnets on top of each other. So that's a very possible test. And as you could see right now, oil is a teeny bit bullish, right? At this moment, starting at about 10.03, the moving average crossed over. It's sitting on top of all the support. So you could definitely get a test of that R1 and the high of the day. Um, but it's very interesting if you look You've got the 200 below us, roughly 12 ticks away. You've got the R1 mid, roughly 20 ticks away. And you've got the low of the day, roughly 25 ticks away. And my best buddy, the PP, but that's pretty far. That's 47 ticks away, 45 ticks away. However, it's an oil trade. That's a possible target at some point. I think the PP is a phenomenal reversal point phenomenal reversal point okay at jobb currently we're not trading the oil trade live the risk is very high but we certainly want to educate people about this report so they can make their own decision the standard jobb trade for trading oil looks like this This is what the trade looks like. It's a seven second, a seven tick bracket. It's a 12 tick stop. It's a 10 second cancel. Okay. So the way you set that up is very simple. It's a seven tick bracket. The entry time is 1029.57. And here's the hardest part about oil. What do you choose as your targets, right? So you want to make sure you've been testing some reports to see how much oil has been popping. It really has been a little bit tame on the pops over the past bunch of weeks. It has been a little bit tame. I like to do something like if I'm trading two contracts on oil on a report, I like a first target of seven, so I have a shot of getting it even with slippage. And then depending on how the charts are looking and how oil is behaving, because it hasn't been exploding, 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 I would look maybe for seven and 15, seven and 20, somewhere in there. Your stop again is 12. That's the size stop we use. You have to be careful with oil if you're going to use the break-even trigger and profit. The way the break-even trigger and profit works is, let's say you make it 10 and 2. What that means is, if the market moves 10 ticks, move my stop to break-even plus 2. It doesn't mean take any profit make any sales or any purchases. It just means if the market moves 10 ticks, move my stop to break even plus two. Keep in mind, it's got to move plus the bracket. So it really has to move 17 ticks. And then the stop will go to break even plus two. Okay. You could also delay that move because sometimes the market is so crazy. You could delay it. Jay likes to delay it five seconds to six seconds if he's going to use that feature. 99 is essentially off because we're probably not going to get a 99 tick move. So a very simple J-O-B-B oil trade is a bracket of seven, an entry time of 1029. There's our test of that high, by the way. A 
bracket of seven, 1029.57 entry, 10 second cancel, and a 12 tick stop. Okay? That's the standard JOBB trade. Running it as a SIM doesn't really help us because you don't get an honest fill. Um, it doesn't really give us enough information of any great import, especially given the fact that we've done it time after time after time. What I would rather do is see if I see anything other any other trade that might make sense. Okay. And I'll be honest, I don't do a lot of, if any, live oil trading after the report. This is more educational than anything, but I would love to test Chantal's trade, which is an after the report trade. You do have to wait a little bit. So not everybody's going to be willing to do it. Her trade. And Chantal, correct me if I'm wrong. Hey, Chantal, if you write it out, that would be the greatest thing in the world that you could do for me. She trades from 1050 to 11. She creates a range trade. Okay. She uses a bracket of two. She has two separate trades, actually. She'll sometimes stay into the trade until 2.27 p.m. Eastern time with a stop of 30 and a target of 100. Okay. But she also has a what I call the trade room trade, right, Chantal? We could call this the trade room trade. But even the trade room trade is really informational because we'd have to stay here too long. Because if you're not filled at noon, that's when the trade ends. But the setup is a range trade from 1050 to 11. And after the oil trade report is released, I'll show you how to set this up. It's a target of 20, right, Chantal? Right. A bracket of two uh, for the range trade. And probably not everybody knows how to set up a range trade. So it'll be very useful to, to show people. I can show you. It's so easy to set up a range trade. What you change is instead of it being a breakout, uh, I'm just tempted. I think I'd rather wait until after. Let's wait until after the news trade because uh, let's first concentrate on what's happening now. Okay. And then we'll talk about Chantal's trade. But I just wanted to give everybody a heads up. If they want to stay a little bit longer today, we might stay and see what her trade is does in the short term understanding though that you really have to hold it longer than we would stay in the room okay but that doesn't make it a bad trade that makes it just something you have to hold longer she's done a lot of testing and no one is expected to do it live today except chantal if she wants to because we're just teaching okay so you could do a normal J-O-B-B trade. And I haven't looked. Let me take a look at oil on a 15-minute chart. So I would say that oil is somewhat bullish today, okay, since midnight. All right, here's midnight and oils. I mean, it's not a huge range. 
It's a pretty small range. 52.21 is very small to 52.39. And some people would say, hey, it's oil report day. Smaller ranges. People are waiting for the report. And there's probably some truth to that. Okay. Take a look at the five minute chart. So at 8.30, you know, also what's very interesting about 8.30, when we did that building permits report, wow, did anybody look at the Canadian uh, manufacturing sales? That was the trade today. And I've looked at that. And I've tested that. And it's been eh, it's been something worth looking at. But you know, Canada is very difficult with slippage. But <laughs> you want to get a little bit sick. I don't want to torture everybody. It's but look, one of the hardest parts about news trading is, hey, deciding what report you're going to trade. And we don't normally, in fact, we've never traded Canada manufacturing sales. But it is something I look at. So um, I've been thinking about it, wasn't really planning on trading it today, but look at this. This opens my eyes, though, and makes me think, oh, wow, look at how the Canadian market moved at 8.30 when they released their manufacturing sales information. That's a tradable trade. And the news was bullish. It was a perfect J-O-B-B trade. It would have been a perfect J-O-B-B trade. I checked with the range chart to make sure there was no pull down before uh, the breakout. Make sure that there was no way of getting pulled in short before long. And it would have been a beautiful trade. The question would have been slippage. But it looks to me like a profit could have been made. But again, that has not been a report that we normally trade. But hey, that might be a report that's uh, it. The reason we haven't been trading it is because it comes out at the same time as building permits and housing starts most of the time. But that might be the better trade. If that's the better trade, maybe one day we'll move over to that. That's a possibility. We're not stubborn here at thenewstraders.com, right? Try to be open. Try to keep our minds real open. So we're on 1217 on oil. Don't forget. So oil is a little bit bullish since midnight, I would say. But there are a lot of magnets down to the downside, I would say also. I don't have a gift trade, okay? And you don't get a gift trade more than once or twice a month. And a gift trade, I would define a gift trade. If the central pivot was sitting, if this R1 mid was the low of the day and the central PP was sitting on top of that, that would be a nice short, okay? That would be maybe a nice gift trade. Anybody have any questions? Does anybody trade this report live? I'm just curious. Now, there are pl plenty of reports we trade live. And I personally, I like the oil trades, but they are risky. You could lose $1,000 on, on one trade that goes bad. And that's the problem with it because you might make 150 on a good one, 300 on a good one, 400 on a good one, and then boom, you have a thousand dollar loss. And out of four trades, you're down. So some trades are maybe best left watched, right? Maybe some trades are best left watched. And maybe that's my job, right? To let you know and to warn you which trade you might be better off watching. Now, being a trader by definition means you like risk. So people will trade it anyway. It's the nature of what we do. And sometimes they'll have a good trade. Okay. 
and that's great. Nothing wrong with that. But I think you all understand exactly what I'm saying. Richard, I completely disagree with you. You have not been here long enough to see some of the bad trades that oil can do. Uh, so I want to give you a heads up. I totally understand what you're saying. You'd like to trade oil news. Here's what Richard said, and here's why I disagree. I'd like to trade oil news live because when oil goes, it really goes fast. I agree 100%. It is suited for breakout trades as it rarely looks back. Richard, that's where we differ. It often looks back. It often breaks, explodes. What happens, Richard? Here's the problem. Everything you say is true. It's great to trade. It moves fast. I don't have a trade I'm setting up today. Um, I think it's possible that it could test. We could test the 200. We could test the low of the day. And we could test the central pivot. Okay. But I just don't have a trade at this moment, really, that. I would put my money on live. But to get back to what Richard's saying, so Richard, what happens sometimes, it just whipsaws. It takes you into the trade, stops you out, takes you in on the other side, stops you out. That's what oil can do. And in fact, even the WASD did that to us once. It, it's very rare. And I usually don't ever think of the WASD doing that, but it did it once. News trading can do that. It can happen. It can happen. You could get pulled in on the wrong side. So I'll tell you what, since I don't have a trade, I'll just do the normal J-O-B-B -B sim, which I haven't done in weeks. And then we'll try to analyze it real quick to see if we can tell if it would have been real since I have it set up. And I really don't have a, look, you could have a, a let me just think for a second before I make a decision. We've got five minutes. Here's my decision. Here's what I'm thinking. It just tested the high, so that trade's over. It tested the high. Obviously, it could still test it again on a little bit of a pop, but I think the odds are it's going to test the 200 or the low of the day. That's what I think. And reverse. Better chance of a reversal from the 200. So this is 46, nine ticks. So I would have a possible long at the low. And then if that trade failed, to be honest, your stop has to be a little bit below the PP has to be almost a 30 tick stop. So that's a lot for people, but it's very possible it could hit the low, keep going to the PP and then reverse. Okay. So you could do a trade. I'm going to watch. Let's watch oil instead of just simming. Let's see what it does. So what I'm saying is what I think is a real possibility. Look, the news could drive the price up. Okay. That could happen. But I think from the way the chart looks, there's a good chance. I think it'll go through the 200 rather than stop here in reverse. I think there's a real possibility you get a, a, a hit of the low of the day and a reversal. Okay. So you could put a, you could put a buy in there for fun. We're just testing. Okay. We're testing. This is fun. And if that fails, right, I think it has to fail under the PP, which most people don't want to take a 26 tick stop on oil. 
but I don't think that's unreasonable. Check your time, especially if you're really trading live, please. But my trade would be this. And I would trade two contracts. I would expect a pop down to here. And then I would want to get a 10 tick profit if it reverses on my first contract. Okay. I don't have an ATM written. You want to have stops set up. A sell at 52.39. It's a good sell, Lisa, if it got there also. That's a great key number. It's a great sell number. And it's a great, in other words, if you think it's going to go down to the low, why not take advantage of it, right? Why not take advantage of it? So, Lisa, let's watch that also. Lisa's saying sell at 52.39, down to the low. So if it gets down to our low, Lisa had it on the money, okay? Okay, Lisa, great, great thought. So I'm, I'm watching that. I'm watching that too. I don't have enough time to put it on, Lisa, but I think it's there's sense in it. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So you've got news coming out. It looks a little mixed. You had a see how you had a move up, Richard. You had a move up of about forty six. Six ticks. Okay, so depending where you were, you could have gotten pulled in on the long side. It wasn't that fast. Lisa's sell was perfect. Beautiful. 39 went past 29. Lisa got her 10 ticks. Now the question is, do I get my buy or does it go through? I'm holding till I get stopped out below the PP. Okay. I took a ball. I made a mistake and I didn't mean to buy a third there. I meant to sell one. So I'm going to sell one at the market. Okay. I'm going to sell another at the market because I made an error. I have a profit and that's fine. I meant to sell, not to buy. And if you make a mistake, you can do whatever you want to do. But I had a profit because I bought down here. Okay. My buy was great. Lisa's sell was beautiful. And now there's one in, but I don't have any targets or anything on the screen because look, we were only testing, didn't set the trade up properly. I need a sell to get out of my position or a stop, right? I'm happy to get out right here. Okay. So that would have been, <clears throat> that was not a badly thought out trade, if you think about it. That was not a badly thought out trade. Your risk, think about what the risk would have been. Okay. Think about what your risk would have been. Lisa sold at 39 and that was brilliant, Lisa. That was really great. Because if you think it's going to the, the low of the day, why not take advantage? Why not take advantage of that move down? That's a big move. You know, it was like almost 20 ticks. Lisa went for 10, which makes sense. Okay. So she sold at 39 and the first move went to about 27, if you remember. Then it bought my, my two. I meant to sell one. I accidentally bought one. That's why I sold manually. Okay. I sold two manually and then I sold my third one up top. Just because I know oil could reverse, go crazy, I, I would have been happy to take $300 on this trade. Okay. 
that's a possible way to trade the oil report, to find key areas that make sense. Now think about this. The PP was a little bit far, and that's why you know it didn't hit the PP. But the low of the day was a pretty reasonable place to buy. I mean, you could have put a buy in at the PP, but you wouldn't have gotten filled, okay? You would not have gotten filled. So you had to be willing if you were going to play. I believe, look, there's two ways you could approach it. You could put a random 12 tick stop in below the low, okay? You could say to yourself, hey, and a lot of traders trade this way. I'm willing to lose 120 bucks on, an, on a contract of oil. If it hits the low of the day and it doesn't reverse, I'm willing to give that idea 12 ticks or 10 ticks. That's fine. That's allowed. That's not stupid trading. That's capital preservation. It's not horribly unreasonable by any means to have a 25 tick stop on oil. And the PP is an amazing point. It would have to break through there and keep heading down. That's a big move. Odds are with you that you're gonna you're gonna make money on the trade doing what we just did. And we did. Okay. And keep in mind we didn't get credit in dollars for Lisa's trade. Okay. That would have been 10 ticks. That would have could have been 10 ticks. It could have been. Good lesson. People learn something. I think there's something to learn here. The JOB trade. Let me see if I can. Chantal, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm going to reset my simulator. Let's be honest. We're looking. I've been looking for alternative ways to trade oil, okay, that are not as dangerous as the JOBB report. Now, I love the JOBB reports, but the oil report is dangerous. It's one of our riskiest. You don't have to trade it. You don't have to trade every report. That's why I love our system. I choose. I, want, I choose what I want to do, and I make up a million of my own trades. That's the best part of it, making up your own trades. I don't need, you don't need me every day to tell you what to do. Okay, let's see if oil downloaded. I'm going to connect market replay. I'm going to look real quick to see if today downloaded properly. Did I download the 18th, folks? If I didn't, I'll have to do it again. It's okay. I downloaded it. We're good. This is what the chart was right before the report. Let's do the JOBB trade. Okay, see if we can tell what happened. I think it moved slowly enough that we should be able to tell what happened for real. We had a seven tick bracket. We had a 1029.57 entry. I had said that I would trade two contracts for seven and 15 ticks. Okay, I'm not going to make anything up because I saw what the index did. And we use a 12 tick stop just like the higher. Okay. We're on replay. Keep in mind on replay, you're not looking at this clock anymore. You're looking at the clock here. Press play. There's our brackets. Four seconds. K 
Okay, it looks like that you would have survived. Let's look one more time. Looks like you would have survived the whip with a 13 tick stop, uh, with a seven tick bracket, with a seven tick bracket. That's the question. Keep in mind, oil moved up before it moved down. Okay. So here is the current price right before the trade. If it gets higher than 52, 54, sorry. If it gets higher than 54, our bracket was seven. If it goes above that bracket, it'll pull you in long, okay? 51, and that's as high as it got. So the J-O-B-B trade, I would have then moved somewhere around there. Would have worked nicely today, okay? You could move in, you could wait. You know, we know it's going to hit the low so we could cheat and let it wait, but that's not our point. The point is the J-O-B-B trade would have worked very nicely today. I thought the news, uh, the news I looked over and I saw mixed numbers. It was a larger drawdown expected, but they were expecting a pretty large drawdown. That would make you think price would go up, H-E, right? Let's think, right? Less means higher. But the news was quite mixed. Distillates, which are now becoming more important in the winter, kerosene, things like that, and gasoline inventories. Gasoline had a bigger build than expected, okay? Enough to drive the price down the way it did? I'm not so sure. And, and maybe that's why oil did reverse. What I just wanted to show you was the J-O-B-B trade. So you could see today it was rather tame and it's been rather tame lately. It has been rather tame lately. It would have worked today. Okay. It would have worked today. Now I'll show you Chantal's trade. Uh, I don't think the news indicated a direction very well, H E. Okay. I really don't think it indicated a direction that great because it was a little bit mixed. Uh, if anything, to me, the big drawdown indicated a higher move, but there's a lot of different things that play into it. You've got all the world news acting upon oil. Sometimes oil just doesn't pay attention to the news at all, okay? Sometimes the news has no bearing just for an instant. You get that pop, that drop, and then a minute later, the news is done. And it's really back to what the world is up to. And then sometimes it's it's perfect. Okay. This happens to be, I'm up 30 bucks from last night. Sorry, this morning. So now oil, it made that new low. And look at that PP, folks. That's a test of the PP. Two ticks is a test. I would have bought that. I would have moved right up to it because my stop, what a low risk trade that is, a PP trade. You could use a seven tick stop, okay, on a PP trade. Richard, I read everything you said and it's really good stuff. Really good stuff. So, uh, but I want to get into Chantal's trade because I've got a little bit of time to show you how to do it. So Chantal has a range trade, okay? Chantal, you want to write it down for me? And then what I could do is put it in a Word file and show it to everybody. Or I'll tell you what, Chantal, I can do it. You don't have to do it. Chantal, you have two trades and I'll put it in a Word file. We have plenty of time. If people want to spend the time, I'll spend a little bit of time and explain this.
okay? This is Chantal's oil range trade, but we're gonna narrow it down to one. All right, if people wanna spend the time, I will do this. She's not H-E. So the range and the bracket is correct. Chantal, what's the target? Twenty and the stop. And I know I've asked you this a million times. Don't get mad at me, but we've talked about a couple of different trades, and it's for the room, so I want to make sure I'm 100% right. And if not filled by what time? What's our range time? What's our exit time? We have to have an exit rule. Exit it if. And we, we need an entry. We need a cancel rule also. So these are the two things I need you to tell me, Chantal. The cancel is by noon, but what is the rule? Cancel if what? Cancel if no profit? Cancel if not filled? How long will you wait to get filled? Or you just, that's not an issue because it's only a two tick bracket. You're going to get filled eventually. There's no way you won't get filled. Cancel if not filled by noon, but that's never going to happen. But we could put it down. That is a rule. There's one time out of a million that might happen. Are there any other reasons you would cancel the trade, Chantal? Any other reason you would cancel the trade? So you would just wait after 11 to get filled. Okay, exit if, exit if your target is hit, exit if time gets to, and this is the big one, Chantal, exit if target or stop is hit, of course, and exit if time gets to Chantal has two of these trades. Chantal, don't you really have two? You do one of them until 2 27 p.m. with a 100 tick target. And she has a second trade. What was your second one, Chantal? For some reason, I don't have that in this file. Wasn't the second trade until noon? Exit at noon, if profitable or not profitable? I wasn't sure. See, I'm... Really pinning you down for an exit rule, Chantal. I want an exit rule. I don't want just, I mean, it could just be exit at noon no matter what. That's an exit rule. That's fine. That's okay. Okay, you're saying I mix both. So start over. Well, there are two trades. There are two trades. So let's do it the right way because we have time. Make this trade one. Chantal, trade one. Just answer my questions will make it the easiest. 
range, bracket, target 20. Okay, she's saying forget this. Okay. Bracket of two, target 20, stop 12. If not filled at noon, no trade. Rare. But if you are filled, just exit if your target or stop is hit. And if it's not, exit. Exit at 2.27 Eastern Time. That's the trade. Okay? That's her trade. Chantal has traded and has tested this trade. Tested. Tested, not traded live. The trade for 20 months? Is that what you told me? Okay. So how do you set this up? How do you set up a range trade? We don't need the news, right? We're not worried about the news. Right click, strategies. Start from scratch. The range trade is my favorite trade. So the first thing you do is go to entry type. And everybody has this software, this version. Choose range trade. Then you'll see you have entry range trade. Ticks above the range, ticks below the range. It's going to be two and two. That's the bracket of two. Okay, probably best to say ticks above below range. Okay, that'll make it less confusing. Ticks above range, ticks below range. Graphics shown on the chart. You just leave the chart. That's always true. It just shows you your buttons. The start of the range is 1050. That's easy. The entry time is 11. So if you really need help, and it's not unreasonable, okay, to spell it out. People don't always get it. Okay, I understand. I totally understand. I'm just saving this so we could discuss this in the future, okay? Yeah, it's gonna be 227, Richard, equals 1427, okay? Because it's military time. Range start time, 1050. Entry time is 11. Entry time, 11. We don't do anything else. Mode is strategy internal. Now you just use J-O-B-B just like normal. But she has a setup, so we're going to use her setup. How many positions are you going to use? I would use two. 
And because I'm using two, let's still just do what Chantal says to do. Two positions with a target of 20, okay? And a stop loss of 12. Nothing's getting done. That's it. That's the trade, folks. It's 2.27 in the afternoon, Richard, because oil closes at 2.30. The same day. It's the same day. Okay? It's the same day. All right, folks. You know what would be awesome, awesome feature to put in the software? Exit time, right? If the trade is still open, close the trade at the exit time. That's going to happen one day. I'll tell you that right now. All right, let's go over the trade once more because it's starting to draw the range once I apply it. And then enable it and true. So you got to range trade. That's why we're not worried about bracket. We're worried about ticks above, ticks below. 1050, it'll start drawing it. You don't have to be there at the beginning. As you'll see, a range trade, you can start at any time within the range. I'm doing two positions, 20 ticks, 12 tick stop. That's the trade. There's a couple of rules that we talked about. Hopefully, I did it right, which I did. And you see, J-O-B-B creates the range. In order for the range to work on both charts, nope, he didn't do it. I, I, I'm okay. We're okay. I forgot. I thought we added something that uh, when the programmer first wrote the program, he only did the range on that side. So now, so you understand what's going on, and I'll test my time also because it's an 11 o'clock trade. Time dot is you'd like to have exact time. Chantal's trade, and this is an oil inventory day only trade. And not when the oil inventory is on Thursday. Hang on one sec. I was supposed to do something. So now what you're seeing is a range being drawn. And you see our target, our entry, two ticks above the range, two ticks below the range. Also, the low of the day is there. And you can change the lines to be solid so that you know that those are the range trade entries. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Let's see. You know what? I don't want to turn it off. But trust me, I'm pretty sure we can do it. 
So we're going to enter this trade with not that big a stop. 12 ticks and see if it works. But we're not going to wait that long. I just wanted to show it to you. This is a trade that Chantal has designed. And her testing says it's a winner. I'm very excited. Lisa, I can't thank you enough for opening my eyes to your trade during the oil trade. I know better. And I usually think downside to get to the downside, but this morning I didn't. And that was just a great heads up. And that's why I love the trade room. People helping each other. So now we have 45 seconds. And sometimes I bet Chantal's trade just ends quick. Sometimes oil could move. It's not flying right now. It's calmed down quite a bit since the report. So at 11 o'clock, you'll see what's going to happen, just like a regular J-O-B-B trade. There you go. A regular J-O-B-B trade now. Only we use time ranges to enter. Get it? You can design a range around anything you want. Nothing could be more creative than that. If you like... Trading the first 30 minutes, the breakout or the breakdown, bingo. Create a 30-minute range trade on the ES or the NQ or the S or whatever. If you like trading anything at any time of day, within one time and within another, our range trader will let you design that trade. It's fantastic. It's absolutely, I think it's, it's powerful. So if you know that there's a time of day that you want to trade on a regular basis and you know by your experience that it moves that time of day, set up a range trade and see if you're right. Maybe it'll keep you safer. Maybe it'll just keep you safer. Maybe, maybe it'll tell you you were wrong about that time. You don't know. But let's stick around and see for a few minutes and see if we get filled. You know, some people might say, hey, I'll do a five-minute cancel. If it doesn't fill me in five minutes, eh, maybe oil is just not moving enough after the report. Maybe I don't want to be in it. Chantal, have you done any testing like that where you tested various times that you would stay in if you weren't immediately filled? This is recorded, James. James, it's recorded. Send me an email and I'll make sure I get you a uh, copy, James. James, I take that back. I'm going to make you go to the blog. <laughs> I'm going to put it on the blog, James, because I think this is such a valuable trade room. Fair enough? I'll put it on the blog. It might take me a day, but it'll get there because it teaches a lot of stuff. It teaches, A, one method of trading the oil trade that we don't normally do or that we started to think about. Two, it teaches how to use the range trader. That's real good blog stuff. Basically, blog, Steve, the blog is just going to be a place where we post what we think is really useful content. So we think that 
our folks are going to like going there. We're going to put trade results up there. I mean, why not? I mean, you know, trade lessons. There's our fill. And now no reason to panic here. We have the trade set up. The trade is set up. You don't even have to do anything except watch it. We're either going to get stopped out or we're going to make a couple of bucks. Okay? We're going to make some money. And it may not happen until 220 today. So how about I'll give it five because I got stuff to do. And I'm sure you all do. And hey, Chantal, Chantal, look at that. A quick stop. So look, folks, in some ways, that's it's a perfect demonstration. A trade isn't going to work every trade. It doesn't mean Chantal's wrong. This is one trade. The next 10 might be great. And look, it, it stopped us to the tick. It stopped us to the tick. To the tick. <laughs> the point is, Chantal put her time in. This trade's been great for eight months. I use a rule that if I get stopped three times in a row, then I put my trade on watch. I will not trade it live again for at least a couple of trades. I want to make sure that something hasn't happened. Okay? But it's not the end of the world that it didn't work. The point is she came up with an idea. Her idea may be phenomenal, but today it got stopped. Now, look, you could have traded that with the new software. As soon as we released the new software, Chantal, is there any reason to think that long was the only way to go? I don't really see that today. Do you? I don't either. I think it was just a stop. That's what it was. And that will happen. And now it's not to the tick, so that's perfect and fine. Good lesson, folks. Any last question? Chantal, thank you so much for your time and for the trade. Anybody have a question? Lisa, thank you. Exactly. Uh, Richard, Chantal, how many trades did you test, Chantal? Richard wanted to look at the last 200. Uh, Richard, it's a trade day only. Richard, it's a trade day only. This particular trade. She did 80 tests, Richard, 80 tests. Okay. 80 tests. That's decent. That's a decent amount of tests. That's a lot of tests. Chantal, do you have a ballpark uh, positive percentage? You're saying a 30 tick stop is even better? We were stopped at 19. Today, I think, oh, it would have been close. Whew. Today, we might have survived 30. How much better is 30 ticks, Chantal? More than double the, the profit rate? More than double the success rate? Then let me give you a hard time. Why didn't you tell us 30 ticks?
Wait, we had a 12 tick stop. Chantal, we had a 12 tick stop, right? We entered at 19. We entered at 7 and we were stopped at 19. So are you saying you like a 30 tick stop way better than a 12 tick stop? No. What she's saying is she has two trades. She has a 100 target, 100 tick target trade. And that trade is the same setup. But the target is 100. The stop is 30. And she said that's a more successful trade. So that's something to think about. We'll talk about it again. Maybe next week. One of the reasons Chantal uh, wanted to discuss the 12 tick stop is we were thinking about a trade for the room and a 12 tick stop might actually happen fast enough or a 20 tick target rather than 100 ticks and 30 tick stop that would not happen in the room so you understand that's why we came up with this but Chantal are you saying you only trade it one way So give me the best trade, Chantal, for getting the room and for getting time because it's all about using J-O-B-B -B as the range trader. So trade two. Or best trade, we'll call it. Same range, same range, target 100 ticks, stop 30 ticks, still cancel if not filled by noon, right? You're going to get filled, okay? It's only two ticks. You're going to get filled, so you don't have to worry about that. And then exit the trade. You always want to exit the trade before the oil market closes. That's 2.27 p.m. Eastern time. Okay? So for people that are willing to take more risk, that's her favorite trade. Okay. Everybody got that? Everybody got that? That's her favorite trade. All right, folks. This will get posted on the blog. I promise. Any last questions before I go? Last question. Richard, thank you. We're doing a lot more different things with J-O-B-B. -B. Lisa, I'm extremely upset that you're upset about chat. And I am really going to try. I figure I got six months because that's how long your membership goes. Lisa. So I got to come through for you. I am really going to try. Chantal, everybody says thank you. Ooh, Lisa. Okay. Then I have less time. Lisa, I have less time. Maybe you'll stay anyway, Lisa. I hope you're. it's worth it to you. I hope it's worth it to you. 
Uh, any last questions, folks? Last questions. Lisa, I figure you owe me your life for those key numbers, right? <laughs> I figure you owe me your life. <laughs> anyway, I will see everybody. Uh, Rich, I can't go over it. You have to, you're gonna have to watch the blog on this one. It's too much to to recap, Rich. It'll be up on the blog. It's we did so much stuff. It was not a normal. We didn't do things normally. You're going to have to spend some time watching it. And I'm not giving you a hard time. We just didn't do a regular trade. But hey, Rich, I'll tell you this. The regular J-O-B-B trade would have worked. Okay? Just so you know. Regular J-O-B-B trade would have worked. But we did a ton more other stuff. All right? So HE, I don't have any time today. There's no hope today. Uh, probably not till Friday. I have a webinar that I have to do that I didn't know about, and uh, I'm so I have an eight another trade room tonight. HE, I'd love to. Is the truth. I just don't have the time today. I'm not ready for the webinar. Uh, folks, don't forget tonight we have an eight thirty trade room. Okay, Chantal, you're in the trade live, the big one. All right. So Chantal has a 30 tick stop and she's making money right now. Tell me how it works out, Chantal. Eight o'clock trade room tonight, folks. Eight o'clock trade room. So I'll see everybody tonight and I'll definitely send an email on that. Take care.